I mean, I would just say like, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a high octane horror book about a world where uh, darkness covers the earth and changes everything into a terrifying monster. People are struggling to stay alive. That's it, you know? It's, it's like a, a world where all your worst fears in the night, you know, are, are, are possible. I mean, to me, this isn't the pitch anymore. This is me saying like my thing, but the reason I also really like writing it is my nine year old right now to be, is still struggling with a, a real acute fear of the dark and waking up. And it got me thinking a lot about it, you know? And for me, it's, it's a, it really is just anxiety. And when you've, if you've had anxiety or depression, you know, a lot of the time it feels like you look around and all your worst fears are, are, not only possible but probable and that's and your body reacts to that with this alarming visceral response that makes you feel like oh i everything is doomed and this is happening and the dark makes all that stuff possible even you know even when you know it's not rational with this story if uh, and someone's coming in cold turkey they don't know like what is this i would just say this is mad max meets aliens but on a much broader scale just that's you know it's just full of action and uh, high octane intensity. You got monsters, there's horror, but there's a lot of action. It's kind of like superhero -y. The concept to me is, it's an original concept to begin with, like I haven't seen it before, but it's also, it's a blend of different things. It's a high octane horror book. And it also, it has, um, I think it has a mythology that's really its own. You know, it's, it's character driven in a way where I think if you read the first issue, you'll see there's a big investment in who these characters are, what their backstories are, why they're the right people to follow in this world. We want this to read like a superhero comic done in a horror setting. You know what I mean? Where you can read it arc after arc. It's got that kind of high stakes, uh, that high stakes sensibility. It's got the characters in the cool costumes. It's got like all kinds of customization with each character and you know, all this stuff. So it's got the fun and the energy and the color and the kind of um, mentality of a superhero comic, but done in, in a horror way. So it's got kind of the best of both worlds. Val's a character who we built together, you know, the book is literally about uh, a darkness that separates us and makes us monstrous. And, and for us, like when I was talking to Tony about the character, you know, I grew up struggling, I struggle, I've, you know, I've been pretty open about my struggles with anxiety and depression. And we wanted to create a character that's lived her life in that kind of terrifying space. And so Val grew up uh, legally blind, you know, she had cataracts, she grew up in an orphanage in Mexico, came here when she was adopted uh, at age five and had corrective surgery. But she has this sneaking suspicion that the, the world as she knew it back then, the world where people laughed and tripped her, you know, the world where people were cruel, where, where nature was cruel, you know, and these spots followed her vision wherever she looked and her, even her, um, the insignia on her face, uh, on her face mask and her call sign Sundog reflect her early experience. She wanted to have a symbol on her mask that uh, spoke to her uh, ability to overcome that challenge when she was a kid. So that's the way she saw the sun was these black spots coming over it and making it this kind of ring. Uh, so there's a, there's a real personal investment in the book, in the characters, you know, from Tony, from me, uh, and there's an investment creatively and imaginatively in the world building and the bigger meta story that's going to go arc to arc to arc. And also, I got to say, like, Tony's art is so out of control on this. Like, you know, I've been a fan. We've been friends a long time, and, and I've been a fan of his. His stuff on this, to me, is next level. He's doing new techniques. He's like, and he's a triple threat. He's like, I, I, I can give him ideas, you know, for story, and then he just expands on them, elevates them. So it really is a true collaboration, and it's uh, a real blessing to have a co-creator that you know, it does so much of the, so much of the heavy lifting in the fun way. And it's fun to just jump on the phone and talk about this stuff. So I think we're all thrilled to see you shine. Also. Oh, thanks brother. Yeah, no, it's, it's a breath of fresh air for me after doing, you know, uh, other people's, you know, uh, intellectual properties for so long, you know, um, you know, I've been, I've been itching to get back into creator own just because, you know, I, I feel like when you, are creating it yourself and it's and it's for yourself you know it's it's more of a passion project you know um like i i feel like i i get elevated it, they're just something different when when you when you own it it's personal you know it's like it's like a, the difference between family and friends you know there's there's a different kind of love there um so i'm really proud of it and i'm happy to get the the reactions that we're getting from our peers 
um, it's, it's very flattering, but I feel like the best is yet to come. I really feel like oh, I'm yeah. still learning some things here and it's, it's, uh, it's, a. Uh, you know, it's exciting for me to know that this is only going to get better. So you want you to be able to be like, here, it has some R-rated words, you know, here and there, but you can give it to like a teenage, you know, a, a PG-13 kid that's coming in, like the way I read Dark Knight Returns, where around 10, you know, that kind of stuff. You, you get them in the door through all these different things. It has this video game aesthetic. It has this kind of big high concept commercial uh, log line, you know, it's got trucks, it's got monsters. And yet at the same time, the only reason I feel so confident about it at the end of the day is because we love it. We love the we love the characters. We love what it's about. It's written during a pandemic at a moment of tremendous political division, at a moment when everything feels like people falling down rabbit holes that that are literally like a figurative kind of darkness that transform them into things you don't recognize anymore, whether it's people on any, any, any side. It's a book that I feel I could write for my kids and for myself, like R-rated Saturday morning cartoons, you know what I mean? And be like, here you go. Yeah, I think it's like a really beefy first issue too, which is good. I find a lot, of, a lot of first issues I read or I've worked on over the years, they tend to be almost like prologues or like it's a payoff for just the last page or something, you know, and then you're, you're often feeling like, oh, what's the deal? Or, you know, they're very like decompressed. I mean, this is like a, it's propulsive and fast and fun, but it's also pretty dense. You know, you're getting a lot of stuff, like you get the world, you get the characters, you get the backstory. And there's a lot of cool monsters and stuff in it. So, I mean, first issues are really hard. You can take it from, I mean, the years I've worked on first issues, you go back and look at most successful series and it, the first issues aren't always like the best ones, you know, they're not always the ones that people over the years go back and talk about, you know, and usually I think take six or seven or eight issues before a team really starts to like come together, you know, um, but yeah, this, uh, this one's been great, like right out of the box. So I think you guys hopefully be really psyched to just hand it to people, you know? I think Val's MO is survivalist. You know, she says, whatever keeps us safe. And this arc is largely about Emery, who's been infected, you know, as you see in the first issue. And so has very little hope about, you know, the only thing you can do in this world is kind of stave that infection off. There's, there's no real cure that anyone has seen. Saying to her, the only way to, to go on is, is to be hopeful about it. I need to believe that maybe we can find something out there that will be better than just surviving longer. And so I love the story for that reason too. You know, it's looking at my one and a half year old and trying to be like, oh my God, the kid was, didn't even like, you know, he the first spent the first year of his life in a pandemic, you know what I mean? Where he never saw another child or any of that stuff. Like, how am I supposed to be to this kid? Like, it's a great world, you know that. But that's what you have to do as a parent in some way and look for that and make them vulnerable to the things they're hopeful about, even when you know they might get crushed. So that's, you know, the book, again, as much as it's kind of, you know, I think as much as it's kind of 100 miles an hour, all engines blazing, propulsive machinery, it does have a lot of heart. And it is something that feels for us, at least working on it, resonant about this moment and about where we are in our lives. So we feel really good about that too.